In the Dragon Ball franchise, we have seen a number of villains introduced, each more vile and powerful than the next. And certainly this was the case with the androids, number 17 and 18 who were originally introduced to us as these horrible monsters who destroyed the history of Trunks' timeline and made everyone run in terror. However, nowadays, with the Android and Cell Saga far in the past, and now in the thick of Dragon Ball Super, many people seem to be underrating these characters, and with Android 17 and 18 ready to return to prominence as a part of the Tournament of Power, it only makes sense for us to break down in this video exactly why the androids are underrated in Dragon Ball. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all upcoming videos in the future. Alright guys, so today we are going to be breaking down in this video ways we believe the androids are underrated by the Dragon Ball community and in the Dragon Ball franchise, and honestly, I feel like the androids 17 and 18 specifically are arguably the most underrated villains we've really seen in at least the Z portion of the Dragon Ball series, because a lot of people don't really understand just how much destruction they rained upon the history of Trunks' timeline, and basically, you know, how big of a threat they really were at the time that they were originally introduced. And we're going to get into that a little bit today, but to introduce my guest, you've seen him on my videos in the past, and his channel, Geekless TV, is an up-and-coming Dragon Ball channel that I know if you guys go over there, subscribe, and check out his videos, you're really going to enjoy it. Please introduce yourself. What's up, guys? MJ here. Thank you for having me back on the channel, Mike. Okay, so MJ, uh, we've discussed this before, uh, believing that the androids may be a little bit kind of downplayed in this community, not just in terms of their power, but also kind of their prominence. Uh, what were some ways that you think that we could say that they're underrated in the community, and why would you kind of counter that with some other points of your own? Well, I think the general assumption from what I've seen, and it can may vary on what you've seen and what other people have seen in the Dragon Ball community, but I feel like people just really downplay the power of the artificial humans, you know, specifically uh, 19, 20, and 17 and 18, which is what this video is about. I'm not too sure you've seen this. I think you may have, but you've seen the theory, right, that Goku and everyone else got progressively weaker, and the, <laughs> and, and the cyborgs are all weaker than Frieza, and the only people who were equal to Frieza were uh, Gohan and Cell, so... Yes. <laughs> yeah, that theory has been out there, which is not the case at all. I think people need to understand just how strong these characters are. Frieza in his first form literally blew up a planet. I see some people scale that as to low star level in his first form with a freaking finger. <laughs> and then he gets many, many times stronger. And then it took a Super Saiyan Goku to defeat him. And then that same Super Saiyan Goku trained for three years. And Piccolo mentions that Vegeta may actually be equal to that Goku who trained for three years. And those androids wrecked him. <laughs> they wrecked, you know, uh, Vegeta. It was horrible. They broke his arm. They literally wiped out the entire dragon team, if that's what you want to call them. So these guys are not weak by any standards. They're stronger than, the, I would say, the majority of the universe, considering Frieza, in his first form, ruled most of the universe, or at least most of the area, with an iron fist. Yes, absolutely, and really when you think about it, to reiterate some of your points, it took the legendary transformation of Goku, the most powerful Saiyan at the time, at least in canon, to be able to finally defeat and overthrow Frieza, and, you know, Trunks shows up, who is roughly around the same power, I would assume, as Goku when he beat Frieza, pretty easily kills Frieza and his father, and that's like, oh yeah, these androids can easily beat me, they easily beat everyone in our own timeline. So, even though by current standards, when we have Majin Buu, when we have gods, when we have people who can probably blow up galaxies and universes, 
they might seem weak by comparison, they still were just created and showed up and were far more powerful than literally everyone else who had ever appeared in the universe up until that time except for gods and magical beings like Boo who existed since time immemorial according to Toriyama. But another way I feel like people kind of underrate them is likely because in their own arc they weren't necessarily the primary antagonists. And what I mean by that is when Dr. Jiro as Android 20 and Android 19 showed up, they were kind of originally intended to be the main villains of the arc, and it makes sense Dr. Jiro was the mastermind behind everything, but eventually that got swapped out for 1718, and 1718 were the ones who destroyed the history of Trunks' timeline, they were these really threatening ones. However, Cell then shows up in the main timeline, who nobody he had even known about, not even future Trunks, and starts kind of wrecking house. He quickly surpasses Android 17, and evolves by absorbing 1718, just basically making them cogs in his own mechanisms and machine, so it had the appearance that they really were insignificant. But again, think about this. In the original timeline, and then in the History of Trunks timeline, which are two different timelines, the Android 1718 killed all of the Z Fighters, and all these Z Fighters are characters who had been training since Namek, they had fought Frieza, they were the most powerful beings in the universe, and then they show up Android 1718, and they just clean house. Even Vegeta, who was a Super Saiyan, unlocking his own most powerful transformation of legend, thinking he was now greater than all others, was nothing by comparison as he was killed before them. So, these guys are the ones who drove humanity to near extinction. These are the ones that forced Trunks and Bulma to come up with time travel and set everything in motion in the first place. If it were not for the threat of 1718, there would not be this arc in the first place, and Cell only was kind of somebody who came afterward. There is a line that I think people really overlook, and it's about Piccolo. Now, yes, I understand that it was the motivation of Future Trunks coming, you know, to let them know. And it was the fact that that's why he wanted to go train with Goku. And they kind of like formed a little group, Gohan, Goku, and Piccolo to train in preparation. But I think people got to remember this. You remember when uh, Frieza showed up, right, with King Cold? Yeah. There's a line where Gohan asks Piccolo why he did not go with his people. And he says, oh, because I don't want to live a boring life. And then Gohan's like, so you're training every day, huh? And he's like, yep. So that Piccolo, even without the knowledge of King Cold and Frieza coming, and without the knowledge of the the androids or whatever, the artificial humans, whatever you prefer to call them, he was training Cybernetic every day. organisms, living tissue over metal endoskeleton. Nah, Thank good you. point, Harold. Good point. Thank you, Harold. Piccolo was training every single day. It's literally stated in the manga, so... Like you just mentioned, these are guys who are constantly training every day. You can see in the anime flashbacks that, you know, Vegeta did have the Super Saiyan transformation. It's not like these guys weren't just sitting on their asses. They were just li living their normal lives, doing their regular training, you know. And the androids still came in and wrecked all of them. And that's a pretty crazy feat because the Z Fighters, if that's what you want to call them. I know that's what's the more notable name for them. The Z Fighters are like recognizable people who are just, ex you know, exceptional. And these two android just came in and wrecked them and killed them murder them you know what i mean i think that's something that people really overlook in the future trunks timeline in my opinion so yeah absolutely i agree with that and also you had just mentioned piccolo who i think is something else that we need to kind of uh bring up piccolo and kami had been separate since originally they split when kami was trying to become the god of the earth when he had to shed his evil from himself they had this vicious rivalry, King Piccolo reigned evil across the world and killed most of the civilizations, and up until this point in this arc in the main timeline, they had never really considered or they never really seriously intended to merge or to become reunited once again. However, due to the threat of the androids, that's what really set into motion. Now, Cell was upon the Earth as well, however, it's a great likelihood 
that Piccolo and Kami would have really needed to fuse, or really were going to fuse, which inevitably led to the destruction of the Dragon Balls in the main timeline, just as they were destroyed in the history of Trunks' timeline when the androids had killed Piccolo initially. So no threat up until this point was ever considered truly big enough for Piccolo and Kami to reunite, and the only other time I could think of would have to be Frieza, but Piccolo had already kind of hastily gone to Namek thinking that he could take this dude, and he was completely outmatched when Frieza was like, yeah, I have two other transformations up my sleeve, too. And Piccolo's like, I hope one of them isn't the chopstick transformation. That's all I gotta hope. Sorry, Quinn. But yeah, I agree with you, Mike. <laughs> the threat of the cyborgs was just too much, and it had to force Piccolo and Kami to do something that they did not want to do because it would render the Dragon Balls useless. So they ended up merging just to take on this threat, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in the end, Piccolo still wasn't really even able to kind of overcome Seventeen, or it didn't look like he was really on the winning side at the moment, because Seventeen and Eighteen also have a really cool thing, which is unlimited stamina, which kind of helps them to go beyond some of even the other forms that other characters might have. But MJ, would you like to elaborate on this a little bit? Yeah, but basically when Future Trunks returns, you know, to help the fighters take on the artificial humans, this time he actually has to get serious and he has to, you know, tell them exactly what the cyborgs look like, what their exact abilities are, because, you know, he botched the freaking beginning, you know, he didn't give them any information on them. <laughs> so he has to tell them this time and Piccolo asks the question, do they absorb energy like these others? And he's like, nope, they have unlimited energy, so they never run out. Vegeta even like specifies, so you're telling me these guys never run out of energy? And he's like, yeah. So that's <laughs> a pretty big deal because that actually comes into play in what you were just mentioning in the Piccolo versus 17 fight where Piccolo tries to go all out in the beginning, you know, Helzer and Grenade, uh, Key Blast, he takes off his weighted clothes, like he does not, you know, to start off Loki, he wants to go in there, you know, balls out. Sorry for that phrase. He wants to go in there and just completely wreck 17. And he can't do it. And towards the middle of the fight, you can actually start to see Piccolo's wearing down because of so much energy he's exerted and 17 hasn't, you know? So that is a pretty big thing, in my opinion. Yeah, and a lot of people might also kind of downplay them because, let's think about it for real, in the Dragon Ball community, people love their transformations, they love their yellows, they love their reds, their blues, their Super Saiyan 2, 3, 4, uh, and so on. So, you know, 17 and 18 just being these two kind of like teenage looking people who show up and they just wreck house, you know, they're like, oh, well, they don't look that cool, they don't have all these transformations. But think about it like this, aside from the androids, who really ever got to this level of power without transformations? Now the androids might have been enhanced, however they don't need to go in Super Android 2 or Super Android 3 or something like that to be able to surpass Frieza, they're just created that way. They show up and they could wreck characters who have like these ultimate transformations. And the only other character is really you could think of that are above Frieza's level of power without transformations would have to be the gods themselves and Piccolo, who got there by training with people with transformations. Now, I know MJ wants to say Krillin and Super right now is above Frieza's level of power, but hey, he had to train with Android 18 to get there, and he's been training with her for a long time now, isn't he? Yeah, they definitely have been training in a sack. But <laughs> speaking of what you just mentioned earlier, enhanced humans, I think people really overlook their potential, Mike, because think about it like this. They're enhanced humans. We don't know how long 70 has been training, if he has been training, but imagine if he has been. How many years has it been, Mike? Just think about it. I mean, if TN or Tension on and Krillin could get as strong as they could get, what about an enhanced human? I think people are really overlooking just how big of a threat these guys could be. Like, I'm going to go out on the limb here and people might completely disagree with me and call me stupid in the comment section. It's fine. It's all opinions. If they're boots your level <laughs> or they're even stronger <laughs> than the super perfect cell, I could buy that. I mean, if they're enhanced humans and they actually explain that he has been training, you know, like for so many years, you know, it's like I, I would buy it, you know, because they're enhanced humans. We've never seen an enhanced human actually get serious and train, you know, so I think that's a very uh, big thing that people overlook and they overlook their potential of what they could be, you know. I agree with what you're saying, especially because a lot of people might think the androids can't get stronger, they can't train to get stronger. Well, according to Akira Toriyama, they actually can. They still do possess key, so they can train to get stronger. So 
I really could definitely see it happening because, again, like you just said, they were enhanced to be at the level they're at. They never really trained up until now. So, like, if they have similar potential to, like, a TN or, you know, someone of that level, you know, and they're just starting out at such a small level and they can multiply their power many, many times, them being at super perfect cell or even boo level after this long... I could definitely see it happening. It's not like anyone would really be able to sense them training to know this up until this point anyway. But finally, I think one of the biggest things to take account of and to really bring up when it comes to the Dragon Ball franchise as a whole and everything moving forward after the Android arc would have to be that 17 and 18 are really the ones who pushed Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and the Saiyans as a whole to reach and search for even higher levels beyond Super Saiyan because when you think about it, Goku and Vegeta didn't think probably that there was a level above Super Saiyan in terms of, you know, a transformation. They just thought, here's the legendary Super Saiyan transformation. There was nothing that could ever be more powerful than this. And this is certainly why Vegeta was so freaked out and his pride was so harmed after he had faced and lost to the androids in very convincing fashion. He thought, is the Super Saiyan transformation just bound to be limited because of my own biology compared to their mechanical terrors, essentially? So with this in mind, Goku and Vegeta went into the Hyperbolic Time Chamber or Room of Spirit and Time with the intention of surpassing the Super Saiyan wall to achieve trans transformations even greater, and that's where the uh, Ascended Super Saiyan or Grade 2, Grade 3, or Ultra Super Saiyan, eventually Mastered Super Saiyan, and then even Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, everything really started in the Android arc as a result of the Super Saiyans not being able to overcome this threat that was right in front of them and with their simple training not being enough to make them powerful enough in their bases to really overcome them until they went to the chamber, until they figured out all these other means to make their power on an even greater level. And essentially, that is why they really surpassed the androids and made them seem kind of weak as a result, especially in current Dragon Ball, because they needed to as a result of their very existence. So I think that's certainly the most telling reason why they're underrated, because if it wasn't for them, our characters wouldn't be anywhere near as powerful as they are right now. Yeah, I completely agree with you. You hit the nail on the coffin. Goku and them would have never even thought about SS2. And I'm pretty sure Goku would never even thought about striving for SS3 in the afterlife if it wasn't for the idea that they can grow past the legendary transformation. So this has been another video discussing Dragon Ball and more specifically ways and why we believe the androids are underrated in the Dragon Ball franchise. Let us know your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Make sure to check out MJ's channel Geekless TV down below in the description. Like this video if you like it and if you liked it that much please subscribe to this channel so you can see more content like this in the future. And as I always say, stick around because there is a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, the scrawny Android 17, 18 are not underrated because everybody is below me. And that is the greatest rating of all. Blah.